Okay, Mr. Allred, if you can turn off the prelude, we're going to start on time because I honor those that arrive at 8. So, welcome. We're glad that you're here this morning. We're going to begin this morning by um, um, first singing together hymn 308, Love One Another. Uh, Deborah will be doing our devotional shortly, and Donna will be playing for us this morning, and Sherry will be leading. And opening prayer, I just realized I neglected to ask. Karen, will you offer the opening prayer for us? Thank you, Karen. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start with the hymn, Sherry, and then we'll have the um, prayer by Karen Logan and then Pledge of Allegiance led by Keisha Hansen. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this opportunity we have to be filled with thy spirit again, and we're grateful that we can share ideas with each other and to learn how better to be good teachers and good examples for the rising generation. We ask a blessing to be on those who are not here, who are traveling, that they will arrive in safety and be able to enjoy this this meeting as well we love thee and we invite thy spirit to be with us in the name of thy son jesus christ amen Well, you came back. I'm glad you're here for day two. Now, we are fewer in number because we are here with the American Heritage team at this time. So before I turn the time over to Deborah, just a couple of announcements. Um, we will be here this morning uh, following the devotional by Deborah. Mrs. Adams will speak to us, and then we will have a break at 8.55. It's a 10-minute break, and then we will have session two. I will also speak to you regarding um, the choice everything is called the choice so you have to stay tuned because they it's chapter one two and three right then we'll have a 10 minute break and then we will have um mrs acuna speak to us as well and then we have a break after that and then we go into breakout sessions so if you look at that we'll be in room 208 205 204 and 203 respectively for the breakout sessions uh, you'll be able to hear all of the presenters in the breakout session um, each, each of them have prepared um, 15 minutes and then you'll rotate. So they're all in that uh, fourth through sixth grade hallway. So that's where you'll be and we'll rotate the session. So you'll, you'll get to pick um, basically which one you want to go to first and then you just rotate. So we'll divide into four groups there. Then we have our potluck lunch at noon. We will be in the rec hall for that. The tables are still set up from yesterday. Um, we've taken a few chairs down and a few other things, so we'll be able to enjoy that as well. But the, the tables that are the round tables are where we can place the food, as well as there's a banquet table along the back um, to take care of that too. Then we'll have team building activities, and we'll go throughout the day. So without further ado, Mrs. Audison has our devotional, and then we'll turn the time over to Mrs. Adams. This is kind of a new experience for me. I've never done this before, so I hopefully 
we'll be able to say some things that will be a benefit for, I know it's been a benefit for me and hopefully for you too. Um, have you ever been frustrated with the different aspects of your life? and wanting maybe more happiness or wondering, <clears throat> you keep trying and trying and nothing works as well as you would like it to? Well, I just finished listening to, well, sometimes when I get a little depressed or feel uh, discouraged, there's a wonderful type series that I've listened to and that it's called Love One Another and it's by Dr. John L. Lund. I don't know if you've ever listened to it before, but it's very encouraging and, and it's helped me. Um, I'd like to start by um, talking about the definition of disciple. Um, and of course the 1828 dictionary has wonderful definitions even more than we even find in the Bible dictionary and it says a pupil or learner a scholar one who receives or professes to receive instruction from another and also a disciple is a follower adherent to the doctrines of another hence the constant attendance of Christ were called his disciples and hence all Christians are called disciples as they profess to learn and receive his doctrines and precepts. And then if you add a little bit of word onto a discipleship, the state of a disciple or follower in doctrines and precepts. And we are all disciples of the Savior by our condition of our baptism. That, you know, we, we profess to be <clears throat> on the road to discipleship because of this. And we are asked to be a witness of this discipleship by the power of our personal example. This is hard because we all fall short. We're not perfect. <clears throat> One of the things of this life is to, I think, is to really to learn to become more, um, you know, of a disciple and, and we're continuing this discipleship. And sometimes we think that the Lord expects more of us than he does. And other times we expect more of ourselves than the Lord does. And so, um, and, and then when, when this happens, it can lead to confusion, depression, and unhappiness. So with discipleships, what can we do? You know, um, we were taught in, in our Sunday school lessons and primary and all those things we're taught in this journey for discipleship that we need to acknowledge our, our weaknesses and our humanity and our dependence on the Lord and to confess our sins and to repent um, and but but yet you know we're always um, asked to move forward to, to be more like him and that he will give us the tools and so it's kind of like um, what I've learned with teaching the principles of the Kodai philosophy that I teach is that with with music we take take the student from where they are and progress through all the different steps of music and so the Lord has told us that we are the same way too, that we are okay wherever we are, and we can become a better and a higher self. And um, so, um, and also from the scriptures, we can learn that we, we are to be, there's, it, it can be pretty simple if we look at it in, in maybe three points. Um, we are to be a righteous example to those around us, we are to be an example of love. And this is the key that it hits me every time I listen to the, these series. It says, we are to share and teach those with whom we have stewardship over to the level of the willingness they are prepared to receive. And that's <clears throat> kind of interesting because, you know, we, I think we understand <clears throat> the first two pretty well. But I think um, it's the third one that gives us a little bit um, that is harder to understand and can cause more unhappiness for us. Um, I like Dr. Lund's definition of, of two topics. He said, there's an independent expectation and dependent expectations. An independent expectation is something that depends just on me. And let's call that a goal. A dependent expectation is expectation that involves someone else. And that's called wishes. And so have you ever felt like, oh, I wish my class were more self-governed. Oh, I wish my children would be kinder to me because I'm tired of them treating me like they are. Or I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Or maybe goals could be, yes, okay. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out a better way to get my class to be self-governed, self, um, sorry, self-governed. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to 
maybe spend more time in the scriptures, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to take each child out this week and talk to them individually so maybe they feel more my love. So there's a difference between wishes and goals, and wishes are okay, but if we base all of our happiness on wishes, we're gonna be unhappy. Um, there's another principle that kind of goes along with this third one about teaching to the willingness of the person. It's called common consent. Have we ever heard that before? It's in the scriptures. It's in Doctrine and Covenants section 28, verse 13. It says, for all things must be done in order and by common consent in the church, by the prayer of faith. So common consent means that I'm, I'm going to be teaching you and you're going to be, and, and you're going to say, okay, I'm going to learn. But if you have students or family members who don't want you to teach them, then what happens is that sometimes we feel like, okay, maybe I need to try harder. Or maybe I need to um, tell you this more and more again because you're not getting it because you're not doing what I want. <laughs> that kind of goes back to the wishes. But then if we continue in this, it becomes that we are infringing on their free agency, and so it becomes unrighteous dominion. And then that leads to resentment and, um, and, and unhappiness and all kinds of things like this. And so um, we also learn from the scriptures, God will force no man to heaven, and free agency is a high price that we all pay for. And it's the hardest to give when we feel responsible or stewardship for other people, other children's or other people's actions. Um, so, you know, what do we do when we still are basing our happiness on other people's actions? I think we have to go back to the, to what we can do. And, uh, and then we can be an example of what we want them to be. You know, if you want them to be more kind, then we have to be more kind first. Um, if you want them, like an example, um, you know, we can choose to show love no matter how the person acts. And uh, we don't want to be manipulated or, you know, uh, kind of run over. Um, Dr. Lund gave an example of a child who has a lot of uh, tickets for driving. And so they say, I would really, really like to take the car. And you say, well, I'm sorry, I can't let you do that because, you know, we can't afford the insurance and all the police know who you are and, you know, and so, uh, but you can say, but because I love you and I care about you, I'm going to make sacrifices in my time to take you where you need to go today. Of course, you know, the teenager's going to say, well, I would really rather take the car. But uh, I like what he talks about, too. You know, there's an I love you program and I trust you program. <laughs> there's a two differences sometimes. So, you know, we're, the Lord's not asking us to be manipulated by other people, but it comes back to what we can do. And the third one is, you know, teach to the willingness the person will allow you to teach. But if they won't allow you to teach, you can always still do number one and number two, because that's still what you have control over. I don't know. I think this is a lesson that the Lord's really tried to teach me a lot in my life because many things that have happened haven't been because I have done something wrong but it's been somebody else's choice and so it goes back to you know but I didn't deserve this or I um, I didn't wish this to happen but then I've been taught by the Spirit but I still have choice over my actions. And it doesn't depend on anybody else. And we all have trials in different situations that are not happy. But if we remember that, you know, that we do have choice. And then, you know, what happens if we've tried everything that doesn't work? In the Doctrine and Covenants section 104, um, it gets a good example. The Lord was in a, the church was in a difficult time financially. And the prophet Joseph Smith and those around him were trying to figure out what to do. And so they went to the Lord in prayer and the Lord gave an answer. And so in verse 78, he said, you know, I can see them anticipating, waiting. He says, okay, what I would like you to do is to pay your debts. 
But I can imagine going, great, that's what we want help with, okay. And, but then he goes on, then the Lord goes on to say in verse 79, but my will is that you humble yourselves and you will be able to obtain this blessing by diligence and by humility and the prayer of faith. And so I think, you know, when we talked about number one and number two about uh, being an example and about loving other people, I think that goes back to the word diligence, isn't it? Doing all that we can do. And then Dr. Long talked about five principles of divine intervention, and I love these. And it also kind of talked this way in those scriptures too, in the section 104, it says, then if you've done all that you can do, then the interventions that the Lord is there to help you with is that he will soften their hearts or he will strengthen you and your burdens will be easier or he will raise someone else up to help or he will remove the problem from you or he will remove you from the problem or number five, he will remove the problem. And I have had experiences in my life when those things have happened. But it's not easy because I think sometimes that's where we become unhappy is because sometimes we take stewardship over things that we don't have, we don't need to. And so sometimes I think it, it depends on a lot of self-reflection is that we've got to decide, okay, what do I have stewardship over? What can I do? What is my responsibility? And you know, when we teach these wonderful students, you know, you think, oh, I want them to do this, I want them to do that, but okay, that goes back to wishes. And we can't take away their free agency, but yet the Lord can bless us and help us with the humility, with the diligence, and the prayer of faith to know how to help these students. And anyway, I, I just think it goes back to, um, I remember when I was younger, um, I have a brother that's three years younger and a sister that's a year and five days younger, and, and my sister and I would uh, babysit everybody. Of course, my brother, who was three years younger, didn't think that we had any need to babysit him. And of course, there was no righteous dominion, um, you know, dominion with myself and my sister, none at all. We never told him what to do. We never did anything like that. And so he gave us oh, so many problems. And then I would go back to my parents and I said, I will never, ever, ever babysit again. All these letters. And my dad looked at me, he says, he cannot, he cannot make you mad. You make yourself mad. I'm going, come on, he's doing all these things. And my dad, father said, he cannot make you mad. You make yourself mad. And so that from the early age, it was brought back to me that I am still responsible for my actions. You know, everybody can do anything else, but I, I choose to act. And just like the wonderful things that we talked about and heard about, um, you know, yesterday, you know, the principles. You know, it, it goes back to that, the, you know, Christian, um, you know, behaviors and all those things, we still have responsibility. So anyway, just to um, wrap up, um, we need to be responsible for our own happiness. We give our free agency to others when we expect them to make us happy. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> um, you know, let go of things that we are not responsible for. Sometimes people have to learn hard lessons of life from the things they suffer. We all do. Um, choose loving behaviors. We don't have control over, over who loves us, but we definitely have control over how much love we give to other people. Um, our basic stewardship is to love our Heavenly Father, and he teaches us to the willingness that we are ready to receive from him. And I um, know that if we acknowledge the Lord in all things, that he will bless us. And thank you for this opportunity. And I say these things in the Lord's name.